Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone's having an amazing day. Now today, this is going to be a sort of a few part series of me completely sort of giving the whole polytunnel, now it's spring, a complete revamp, a tidy, and going through a lot of the cacti and succulents that need to be um, sort of repotted or potted up into fresh soil and also tidied up a bit and also any extra plants I'm going to be um, giving away and um, selling also to, um, to other sort of wholesalers here in Northern Ireland and as you can see we have a lot of aloes and a lot of these I've grown myself from seed so over the next uh, few weeks I'm going to be separating all of these and potting them up into individual pots giving any extra ones um, for sale um, to, to local sellers here and also other ones gifting away as you can see we have a lot of extra extra plants here Calancoe, um, Degramontianas and a lot of all um, doubles and extras we're going to be making a lot more room now a few weeks ago I made a video on can you have too many plants and it's very interesting thank you all by the way guys for all of your your comments um, it was meant to be a very light-hearted video so I know some people are talking a bit too too seriously with it but really um, it was meant to be light-hearted um, but it's great to hear that I'm not the only one that has this wonderful plant addiction but it's great also when you have a lot of extra plants to gift any extra ones away and then it gives you more room to look after not only the ones you've got but also more room for the ones you've got to grow and to get them also space for the ones you've really on your wish list and as you can see here this is our polyton overwintered very very well and now it's it's spring now which i'm really happy nice day today but everything's sort of a little bit of a mess there's soil all on the on the tables here the plants are completely bone dry as you can see here very sort of shriveled up signs here where they need a good drink there that's actually a very very good sign because it proves that the the plants have dry and they're ready to be watered now in this video series i'm going to show you a bit of a number of series today i'm going to be focusing on just getting the epiphytes that are here hanging up outside it's a lovely sunny day i'm going to put them onto the hanging basket rails out here purely just for the daytime and i'm going to give them a load of water a really good watering and then at the end of the evening i'm going to put them back into the polytunnel the nights are still chilly it's very early spring and we're not completely over the the frost period yet so obviously a lot of the plants are saying are a bit shriveled they need to be watered I have watered some of the succulents um, a few weeks ago just to keep them from stopping them from shriveling too much. But all the cacti have been stayed dry all through the winter. And um, they, I'm going to be watering these probably over the next few days. I'm going to be showing you in the video series. I won't be doing it in today's, but probably in the next three or four video series, I'm going to show you what they look like before. And I'm going to show you what they look like a couple of days after once they've been watered. So that's, I'm going to be starting watering the cacti back up again now. And, um, but today I'm just going to focus on getting the hanging baskets out because these are desperate these are epiphytic cacti and i have been lightly watering these over the winter because they don't like to be kept dry for too long but i've been keeping them a lot more dry than i would any of the other most of the succulents other than some of the aloes and that have been kept practically all dry since last september 2018 and all of these on here all the cacti have not had a scrap of water at all as you can see they're all pretty healthy and surviving and they'll all plump up again once they're watered and it's going to be interesting to show you the transformation there but as you can see there's a calico they're all desperate to be pretty much watered here as well I have still lightly watered this and the anium will spring back up again it's given a given a good water it's going to be interesting but as as i say this is just purely starting one thing at a time there's so much to do in this polytunnel guys as you can see there's a lot of stuff on the floor that i don't want on the floor under the table is a mess there and we have leaves everywhere and the pots is i just want to sort all this out this all needs sorting out under here but it's going to take a long time and it's probably going to take pretty much all through the spring to do it so 
like one thing at a time <laughs> and I'm breaking it down into little tasks and the most important thing at the moment is to get the epiphytes out because they are all showing signs of bud and they are pretty much shriveling. I did get these out and give them a good water but about three weeks ago we had a good day here in the winter um, but about a month ago, six weeks ago actually and it was nice and, and bright and gave them all a good water then they fattened up but they desperately need it again. Great opportunity while it's dry and sunny out there and this is my rip sally dopsis commonly known as the easter cactus packed with buds and as you can see it is shriveled so it needs a good a good water and this is my slumbergera um, orange brazil that's been flowering flowering lovely now it stopped flowering but it needs a bit of water to pick it up again they just need to be well watered again and here the commonly known as the, the zigzag cactus as you can see the stems are shriveled there but a good drink and it will it will fatten up so that's what this is about here in this video and i'm going to be taking all these out onto the plant uh hanging baskets and then um, giving them a good water and now that's all the hanging baskets out of the polytunnel to be watered and there's Honzi checking over the other plants. As I say, I'm just going to show you some of the, the ones that are very desperately in need of water. For example, this is a sign of the, at the end of the winter, so before they're watered, all the signs are shriveling. Look at these are punchers, guys. Absolutely desperate for a drink. But that's good. It's a good sign. That's how they overwinter. And um, obviously, I say, probably in the next two to three days, I'm going to give all these a good water and I'm going to show you the before and after results. Yeah, I mean, look at this. You can see how, how shriveled up it is there. But that's actually a normal sign. That's how they go. And it's going to be interesting to see the before and after re results. So stay, uh, stay tuned, guys. Anyway, I'll show you what we've got here. Because there is so much to do, we just have to take it in stages and deal with one thing at a time. And today's, as I said, the hanging baskets. Got all of the hanging baskets outside. Couldn't be a lovelier day. It's a little bit windy. So, you know, ideally... <laughs> It's not the best, well, the wind doesn't hurt them, but it's difficult when you're sort of putting plants in and out the polytunnel and everything blows about. But it's a lovely sunny, mild day as well for early spring. As I say, it's the sh um, showing signs of shriveling there, so they're gonna need a good, a good water. It's been a few weeks since I gave these a good water when I would put them out here. I did make a video at the time when I did it, and they all fattened up nicely, but as you can see, they all desperately, you can see there the, the Christmas cactus, Slumbergera, um, Buckley Eye, Shriveling. And um, this is going to be, I may not be able to show the after results today because I'm going to give them all a really good water now. So the water just pours out the bottom. Then I'm going to bring them back into the polytunnel for tonight. And um, maybe the next few days you'll see how they're fattened up slowly and um, how they look now all shriveled and what they're going to look like in a few days time. But just the good news, I'll just quickly show you before I give these a good water. Good news is lots of things happening. There's buds forming on, um, on these, the Ripsalis here. And um, also here, though, this is my big um, Epiphyllum Pegasus that has the most incredible, massive lilac -y pink or fla pink flowers. And it is in multiple bud, guys. Look at all them buds. So this is really exciting. And it's overwintered very well in the polytunnel. There are more buds more buds on here so when this is given a very good water it's going to burst into flower over the next few weeks which is going to be very exciting a lot of these also have got buds on as well I'll show you here's buds forming there on here this one here is my aporo cactus and um, this one here is full of bud and this is actually going to be the first time flowering for me because i have two aporo cactus well three aporo cactus this is the flagliformis which is commonly known as the rat's tail cactus and that that is also in bud as well this is beautiful pink flowers and loads of buds so i'm very excited about that then i have the um aporo cactus malisonii and that's also in bud which i'm very excited about too and this one is another aporo cactus um, not actually sure what the variety is, but I've never seen it in flower before. It's different to my other two. So it's going to be very exciting when these flower. So guys, I'm mega excited to see so many birds. This is my um, monkey, uh, monkey's golden rat's tail cactus. And I've got, um, as you can see here, this is doing no signs of bud yet, but this usually buds more so in the late summer time. Um, so nothing unusual about that. Not desperately needing a water, but it is a bit more epiphytic than the other desert cactus. That's going to be giving a good drink today. And this is my other monkey's tail. Um, this is, oops, <laughs> so you have to be careful here, guys. Oh, golly, hang on a minute. Oh, it's going to, excuse me, guys. 
I'm just going to put this back onto the hook up there. I have to be careful there because the wind is a bit blowy. Now, these is a lovely, um, the golden, sorry, the monkey's rat's tail cactus here. The color, uh, Clyster cactus collidimonosis, and it has the beautiful white hair, and it has gorgeous orange flowers in the summertime. These are the old flower heads from last year, which I'm going to remove. I didn't remove them because I didn't know whether it would form seed, which it didn't do this year. Um, I know I promised a few people seed if it produced seed, which it hasn't done. Um, they're the dead flower heads, but it's always this year. But this as well, gonna a little bit limp. That'll firm up when it's been given a good water. And here we have some more Epiphyllum here. This is the um, German Empress that has been flowering early this year. It had a lovely flower, and I made a video when it did. And um, again, needs a good water. You can see signs of shrivel in there. And this one here is my Cedar Morganianum, um, commonly known as Burrito's Tail. And um, that is it's a little bit shriveling too. If any of a lot of the epiphytic ones are a little bit shriveling because they're on top of the, they're normally hanging up, as you know, on top of the roof of the polytunnel and heat rises. But pretty much else, most of the succulents have pretty much overwintered good. Got the Blossfeldianus here, going to need a good watering also today because these are all in bud and they're a little bit limp. But other than that, some of the aloes as well, which I'm going to be doing over the next few days. So that's today's video, just focusing on the hanging baskets. And what I'm going to do now is give them all a good water and then um, show you it after I've done them all. Now, here we go. Let's get water in the... Uh, Water in the hanging baskets. Now, we always prefer to use clean rainwater if it's available. And one thing we never have to worry about here in Ireland is running out of rainwater. <laughs> and uh, Hans is filling up the watering can here. We're using the smaller watering can because it's easier to reach these plants. And uh, to be honest, we've got big watering cans there and they weigh a ton to hold, lift up. And um, there you go, I'm gonna pass the camera on to Hansi so he yeah. can fill me watering. Not that you guys don't know how to water, but you know, it's just part of the video vlog. We start on here, Let's start on this one first. And uh, right down to the roots. Here, now it's silly me emptying the whole watering can because it's so dry, it's just going to go straight out the bottom. So I'm just going to give a bit of a watering at a time, leave it for an hour and then come back and give more water again. Just so it gives it chance for the, the plants to take up all the water. Because as you know, when plants haven't been watered for a long time, the water does just come straight out the bottom. So, um, oh, they're gasping for a drink. And uh, I have to start with these because these ones need it more so than anything. This Rupsalidops, it's lovely to see so many buds, so it's going to be lovely here. That's that one there. And um, then I'm going to start on this one, the monkey's tail, the lovely white hair. This isn't really shriveling as such. So I'm only going to give this a little bit of water just to just to give it a bit of a boost now. Spring is here. And fill up the watering can again. I know this black book, it might not be the nicest container to hold water, rain water, but it does the job. And uh, here, excuse the noise guys, next to his car. <laughs> hanging baskets are great for the big now this is very shriveled up as you can see this has been very flowering for absolutely weeks on end guys it's just come to the end of its flowering period now um slumbergera when they stop flowering they do go a little bit limp like this so i don't want to overwater this even though it looks like it's desperate to be watered it's normal for them to go like this after they've flowered they've been using a lot of their energy so i'm just going to give enough to get the soil damp and um, give it a bit of a, a kick start, but I'm not going to overwater this at all. Just needs to rest once it's been flowering. These are all in buds, so this is absolutely fantastic to see. And uh, wonderful, three different types of Apollo cactus here. And if you want to know what Apollo cactus is, it's actually semi epiphytic, in other words, it's a cross between the desert and the epiphytic. And um, Hylocereus and the other, and Epiphyllum, it's a sort of a hybrid. Um, another form of epiphytic one, but more desert than epiphyllum. There you go, that's the um, Ripsalidopsis there as well, Easter cactus. See the signs of buds? Again, very shriveled, so that needs a good drink there. So this is all going to burst into flower over the next few weeks. Now these are given a good drink here. And this one here, commonly known as zigzag cactus, but obviously you can get some more rainwater there. Aren't you doing a great job filming, guys? 
If you're not, I'll just come and tell you in a minute. If you're not familiar with Honzi, my wonderful fiance, who is filming now, do go over and subscribe to his amazing channel, guys. Family of Cactusy and other beauties, and links will be up above. So do go over and subscribe. And uh, he has some wonderful, wonderful videos on there. And uh, it's great when I've got my hands free. And he can film me there, and he's a good drink. And as I say, we have a lot of hanging baskets. <laughs> a lot more room in the polytunnel when these are taken out for the summer. It's difficult to really work in there when there's so much overwintering in there, but look at that. Thoroughly soaking it. And as I say, I'm going to leave these for now and then come back and give them all another water so it's got time to take, take up all the, the water over the next few hours before I have to bring them back in again. And um, the reason I'm filming the whole thing is because it's a bit of a video vlog, you know. This one here as well is also an Apollo cactus. Well, it isn't actually, it's actually a Ripsali, Ripsali, so, um, I forget the name, there's so many, it's actually a Ripsalis, Ripsalis bacifera, um, Horida, it's more of a thicker stemmed variety, a bit more there, and last but not least, the German Empress Epiphyllum, and by the way guys, if you're not familiar with Epiphyllum, or you just want to know a bit more about them, do check out a video I've made on how to care for Epiphyllum. I explain why they need more moisture during winter than the desert cacti do, which is why we still give them a bit of water during the winter. And this one here, last one, is not an epiphytic cactus. It's a succulent, just a normal succulent. Um, but I'm gonna give it a bit of water because it's showing signs of shriveling. And also it's one that's a hanging basket. So that means all the hanging baskets are done. So that's the first part of the video vlog revamping the polytunnel series. So hope you enjoyed part one. As I say, today was there's so much to do in the polytunnel, guys. I'm going to have to do it over a number of weeks. Now it's spring. And as I say, today's was just sorting with the, the hanging baskets. Once they're watered then, they can go back into the polytunnel or hopefully out in the next couple of weeks when the weather's good. And then stay tuned for probably maybe tomorrow or maybe the weekend, the next few days anyway, where I'm going to start watering the rest of the cacti and succulents in the polytunnel. Going to give them all a good drink. I'm going to show you the before and after results of what they look like when they're like shriveled up now to what they look like afterwards. You'll be amazed, guys. So guys, if you want to know more about how to grow cacti and succulents, do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. And um, if you go onto the, um, the growing tips and uh, hover your mouse over the growing tips and there'll be a drop down bar that tells you all about different care requirements on there. Do check it out, guys. And as I say, stay tuned for the next video vlog series I've been working in the polytunnel coming, if not tomorrow, the next day. And until the next video, guys, thanks for watching. Send you loads of love and heaps of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. Bye.